Okay. I welcome everybody to Subscale September 2nd. I add the link to the document in chat so you can add your name to the attendees. Great. Okay. Um, so what we'll go through, please add any agenda items, uh, but we'll start with the, the first item. Um, so this is a discussion that I brought up on the mailing list and I also brought up a few weeks ago, but I wanted to kind of back up and kind of clarify one of the um, original goals for the discussion um, in case there was any other comments about it and kind of clarify a few things. Um, so this uh, originally brought up two weeks ago, um, the original ask that, um, that I had was um, around VMI specific metrics and the context of this is that um, we had discussed um, having metrics around VMIs, um, but we didn't want to have metrics that sort of, that, that kind of ballooned out of control. Um, so one of the things like with, um, that we currently do with metrics is uh, we have, we have um, a sort of like a summary of uh, the number of, uh, or the amount of time it takes in, in phases. We have, we kind of, we accumulate them into buckets. Um, we don't actually uh, we don't actually output the specific VMI labels as a name, um, and, and so the, the difference is that we we have a, a a static number of of metrics that come with uh, the phase transitions that we do. Uh, we don't actually report the name of the VMI on them because those labels uh, would quickly grow um, based on the number of VMs in the cluster, and so. One of the things that I'd brought up was, or sort of the question I'd asked here was like, are there any time, are there any situations where we'd actually want to know the um, the actual VMI? Um, we want to, when would we want to kind of like pull back the curtain and say, okay, this is the VMI that is uh, that we care about um, because it's doing something, you know, that's that we want to look at um, more closely. And one of the things that I brought up, uh, sort of one of the use cases was. Uh, was I called it VMIs that were that were stuck, like things that um, that weren't um, that were taking a long time, um, and so what that's the, the kind of the mailing list thread that I that I brought up. The topic was stuck VMIs, and one of the things that came out of it from our discussion last week was um, and was that if, if a VMI is stuck, um, the thing that I want to clarify is that like it won't be creating events, and so. I, the way I want to change the definition is that if we have a VMI that's like in pending or something, and it's or maybe it's in scheduling and it's waiting on um, a device to be a, a assigned to it or something, and it's just sitting there, um, the pod's just the pod's not doing anything. So we're not going to get any events, and this this could classify as something that's stuck. It's not progressing at all. Um, but there are also other cases of this, and so I split this onto a second category, which is like. VMIs that are slow, they're ones that are progressing, but they're just taking a long time. So some amount of time that's longer than what we expect. And this could be for any number of reasons, but like if we went from you know, scheduling into scheduled and we knew how long roughly it, it took to go between those phases and we noticed that one VMI just took an incredibly long time um, and we'd see this in our dashboards, but uh, you know, could this be, it would be useful to know which one it was so that we can trace it and get a better look at it. Um, and so that was one of the things that, that I wanted to clarify about this. Um, but this is a fairly general topic uh, in terms of other metrics that we could do and how we could label them. But are there any thoughts on this though? Like, does this sound like um, in terms of a better use case, like I'd want to, if we can, is, is I think, cause I think this is a little bit more achievable if we can, if we can expect that if a VMI is slow and it is progressing, that we could we could actually see it um, and perhaps label add a name to it instead of um, instead of ones that are that are stuck. Brian, can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Brian. Ah, great, great. Hi. Um, I think the 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 second out of these two points I, you mentioned something like you discussed it last time already where i wasn't there but so maybe i might add something which you already said but uh so regarding these two cases especially the second one we might that are stuck won't create events i think for this one you summarized it pretty well that you would want to see events there 
like normal Kubectl get events. Events for the first case, uh, would it be more something which should be handled via monitoring and less via labels or something? Or do you think yeah. it's not? Or what, what, what I, it sounded a little bit like you wanted to see directly in the objects. No, so I, I want to, basically I want to, I want to monitor it. Like I, right, like when, I guess sort of what I'm saying is that we, we right now, we don't, we see, we can see this, this first case. Um, we can see this show up in the dashboards. if like, uh, and so, like, if you have like a 99 percentile, for example, um, for a histogram, you, you occasionally see like some VMs are just, they're just a little slow. But you don't know which one it is. It is. Say there's like a lot of churn in the zone, there's a lot of creating and deleting happening. We don't know which VMI it is. You have to do a lot of work to figure it out. And so my suggestion is that if we can see these events, perhaps we can pass the the actual name of the VMI um, in addition to the other information we're passing, so we can locate it. Okay. So it's sort of like an it's sort of an advanced way of monitoring so that. We can have like a subset of VMIs that we could look into if we want to. On the not getting events on stuck uh, VMIs, would it be an idea to uh, watch events for VMI pods and uh, forward those just as we forward status, like for a VMI pod event, we've created a VMI event. Yeah, well, so th this one, I guess, we kind of want to discuss. I think like where we are with this one is that I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how we could solve this. I, I think, Kevin, you were the one who said that, like, if Kubernetes has this problem too, and then if a pod is stuck, you know, what is what is Kubernetes going to do about it? It doesn't do anything about it. And, and so it sends yeah. an event usually. Yeah, but but only if it does something, right? So yeah. Uh, like the scheduler periodically tries something and it would periodically fail and send events. But for the time where the where this this component in charge is not doing anything, you won't you won't see an event. But yeah. Yeah. And I guess we have here this kind of gap where we are waiting for uh, for Kubernetes to do the scheduling action for us, where we are actually mirroring pod conditions already in the VMI. But on the pod condition, you cannot necessarily see that, for instance, the scheduler tries something again, you would only see that on the events. And that is where yeah. we are probably silent. Yeah, and that's where we could forward the pod events to the VMI events. So if that's, I mean, if, 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 we're, if we could get some events, then perhaps this could be something that, that's solvable. I mean, I, so, if we, yeah, if, I mean, if the schedule is doing something there and it's posting some, something on the pod, like, I, I mean, we do see this, like if you, like you're impending and you're like, oh, no nodes are available, you know, do like a hundred times or something. Like you can see that there's, but what about like cases, like um, if you're waiting for like, um, like your CNI to do something like to, to provide you with uh, an interface or something, will that show up on the pod? I think so. I thought I have also seen the pod warning about storage not being mountable or available. Couldn't find a PVC that matches. Okay. Yeah. I guess the main issue here is just that um, that on the pod status, you really see, you, so for instance, you have an issue with mounting something on CNI uh, that, that would add a, let's say a condition X on the pod status. So it would add on the first error that condition and send an event. But if then, when then the kubelet retries with CNI to mount it, the condition in the status does not change at all, not even the state, the timestamp, but you would see another event. And that's mostly to avoid storms. Like okay. that you see that, that you get, when you're watching pods, you would get an immense amount of warnings if status would populate it differently. And yeah, um, yeah, I'm also not sure what to do if we would not listen to pod events directly. Okay, so it's so it sounds like it's possible. So we so is it that we don't listen to them today, or that we do? Because uh, we, we have the we don't. We're looking at the pod conditions and we're mirroring them so that you see okay. in the VMI what's currently going on. But if the pod conditions are not changing, 
but just because the pod conditions are not changing does not mean that they are not sent, for instance, 50 events in the meantime for the pod. Okay. Roman, do you have any concerns of, about watching and mirroring the pod events to the VMIs? Yeah, I, I guess just mirror, yeah. Um, I'm not in the play mirror, we should do something with them, but... I would just say, let's be careful when we consider mm. this. Uh, I, I, I can't see anything where I would say it's a definitely a no-go, but I mean, David is also here, but I guess it's, yeah, it can potentially create a lot of unwanted traffic or increase of traffic if we're not careful. Mm. Is there any precedence for, for doing this kind of forwarding of events? I've never really seen anything quite like it before. No, I me mean, neither. I, but I don't. I, I the only case where the events are so prevalent are pods, as far as I know. And I haven't seen another operator wrap pods the way we do. I mean, I, what, what do we could look at what deployment sets and and that stuff does. If they show yeah, that, they're not doing that. No. They, they are just sending events on them, basically media events on themselves, like yeah. how they interpret the general situation at the moment when they are evaluating the objects, but they're not looking at any events or anything. So, and I, I think in general, it's a very safe pattern to do it exactly like this. So what we're doing is kind of the pattern we in, intended to have because it's safe and scales well and everything, but yes, it, it has the disadvantage to directly see always on the object what's going on yeah i think so i mean the, the events sorry yeah, go ahead. so the thing the for me i the most important i guess like i think the first item here i think um would be i think the at least to start and then you know this maybe we can talk about this as more of an advanced case if we want to expand this to monitoring things that get stuck i think this one at least for in terms of like calculating performance, I think would be initially valuable. So we can locate the outliers. And then this one could come later if it's, um, you know, as a way to weed out any sort of external things happening, like, you know, and um, like if any of the device plugins or something is like, we can maybe capture those here. Yeah. And like one more thought. Uh... Uh, event mirroring. Um, I mean, we don't need to do that. It's it's kind of solvable on the client side as well. I mean, like right now, if you do kubectl describe, you get events for the resource you're looking at, but the events are there. Like you can also just query events and say only give me VMI events or only give me events for the VM this VMI because we have the labels on the pod, so we should be able to query that. Not test yeah. it, but it should be possible so i guess okay. the main issue is that that you cannot query related objects right directly so it's not there is no easy kubectl command for doing that but... yeah okay um i think so for me like what, what i'll take away from this one is like a next step is that what i what i'll like to investigate is um taking um taking it towards this route of going like things that are slow so assuming that we'll hit transition times and see if we can um capture we can capture these in, in a way that's that's sensible that in, in, like the way i proposed on the mailing list was that we have sort of a we have a threshold that we expect is as configurable that that we have um per transition that we can set to a large number and if it hits over this number then we'll, we could say, okay, just add the name of this VMI. Okay. All right, I'll explore that, see if um see how that looks and see if that see that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 yeah, I just I think I have said it before. I'm j I'm just careful about introducing any hard coded thresholds into the control plane just for the sake of a metric. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, do we want to discuss that? Like, I mean, the, the idea is that whatever I would do would be configurable to, you know, we do it in the 
the CR or something in the Qubit CR, and it'd be optional. Like we wouldn't we wouldn't use it by default. It'd just be something if you want to have some sort of advanced look into how things are are going with the VMIs, you could use it. Yeah, I think last time Kevin mentioned it could be a, like a sterile tool watching, you know, the VMIs and generating, you know, some, you know, warning or something. And then you, you can have the logs of that, you know, and track that and, and create the thresholds. But outside, you know, the, the counter plane itself, it's uh, just a tool that we run and watch, uh, you know, the all the objects all the vmi objects and all namespace maybe and and then you can mark you know and create thresholds it's like a kind of a debugging tool isn't it and it so, can can go in the direction that uh you know uh, david Vosso is uh developing also a tool for you know for monitoring that but instead of being like uh, something to the end of the test, but something online, I think what uh, Ryan wants to do. I, I have one thought I just wanted to throw out that I've been thinking about for a bit. And I've circled around to it maybe a few times, but all right. So we have different verbosity levels for our logging. Uh, so the default verbosity levels are meant to not overwhelm our logging stack and not just present so much information that people don't know what to do with it. Why are we, does this make sense to, sense to extend that kind of thought process to our monitoring where we have verbosity in our monitoring where if somebody increases the cluster of verbosity of our monitoring, we start to include more information in our monitoring, so more labels, uh, perhaps even more metrics that are more intensive to the logging or the monitoring stack and things like that, that we wouldn't want by default, but maybe during certain load stress scenarios, we would. Is that a concept that we want to even consider? Is it, I'm, I'm not sure. So, so I like having the metrics ready to identify when problems occur. Also the, the rough area like say some VMs are slowly going out of a phase. And from, from my perspective, it can be fine if you cannot directly see you in Prometheus or Grafana, which one it is. Um, I just wonder, for instance, I mean, you, for instance, David had, had the PR where he added that the timestamps when transitions are happening. So it would be rather trivial to, when, when I, see, I, get, I see an alert going off, which says, hey, ooh, uh, amount X of, uh, let's say 5% of OVMIs are suddenly starting slower than usual, that I would then just run my other diagnosis tool, which would really just fetch OVMIs, look at the phase transition and give me, okay, that are the five ones which are slowest right now and I see it immediately. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's really be well. just client side. So because otherwise it's always, I mean, Prometheus and so on, it's really, Great at scale, but mostly if you don't try to save everything. Okay. And I, I want to re-advertise that, that 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 building that, like I I I prototyped that and it was very trivial to build something that just takes the data we have in the VMI and and creates metrics from it when needed because we have all the data all in there already. Like it's not going away. Yeah, and the other thing, for instance, the case with which Ryan mentioned, Ryan, I think. It, a, a very small script can do that immediately, right? Just a few lines, just fetching. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you could. Well, I mean, I, I understand the perspective, but like, we we could. I mean, this could be something in the audit tool as well. Like, it doesn't have to run as a watch. Um, we could just scrape the timestamps based on what's currently there. If we don't want to, if we just don't need the history, we just kind of grab. If you notice something is wrong, we can just capture um, which one it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see that perspective. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, to me, well, to say like, I, I'm not real, like, I, I think I'm, uh, I, I'm not necessarily sold in any direction. I'm just trying to figure out what's the right, what's the right one. So it seems like folks like the, the client side way of doing this, like Kevin, you're on the client side. I mean, other folks are on the client side, it sounds like. So it seems like the consensus is. I mean, client is relative. This can also run in cluster 
all the time. The thing I, I prototyped, it's just exposing Prometheus metrics. You can run it inside and have it as another Kubernetes component if needed. But well, I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, I think like to me, I my, the way I like this the most is that if, if I if I could add this to the audit tool, like that's the way I'd yeah want or to that go. yeah yeah that like to me those are the two options is that with the audit, going through the audit tool and doing it after I notice something is wrong. Um, or having it directly in Prometheus or having it directly in, in our dashboard. Yeah. One thing to point out about the audit tool is it's only going to be able to collect this if those VMIs still exist. Right, right. So you just, it's yeah. like you, you so without, if, if you're okay with not having history is, would be the, the option. Like they have to still be there. Yep. Yeah, so it gives you an option. Like you have the, you have the opportunity to do it if it's, if it's, if it's there. Yeah, and the watch mode that I, I tried, you can give a label select and say only look at this namespace or only this these VMIs or you just watch everything and then you get history as long as it ran. How about so? How about this? I think so. I think starting with the client side to me makes the most sense because it's. I don't first of all, I don't think it's. I don't think it's like a massive commitment to do it. Like it's, and I think it would be useful in general, just to have it. So to me, like that's. I think that's a good place to to start, and then. If it ever comes time that it makes sense that we want to have this expanded, we want to have more history, I think then we can talk about the discussion of you know what you have, Kevin, versus um, having it directly in Prometheus. Yeah, I, I mean it's also not that we did not have VM granularity in the metrics so far. Like when you look directly at VM met metrics, like storage access, network access, and so on, there we really do include the name and namespace so, right yeah. yeah no i mean i mean just for like the per stuff is what i mean so yeah. i yeah like okay so i i think i have direction with this so i i think client i'll start client side with the or just in the audit tool and then you know if depending on what how that goes and how it gets used and if there needs to be more we can talk about possibly extending it to have it with with history which would be either a watch with what kevin has here or the with previous okay all right, I think I have also, a path forward with that. Also, Ryan, what I wonder, um, since you have some experience running Kubernetes on bigger scale, what do you do with events in general? Like, do you mirror them to the logging tool for post analysis or something? Um, the events like for like the pods, you're saying? Or? Yeah, just all like kubectl get events. There are a lot of them, right? And if you delete an object, the events are gone of it, or they are gone after twenty four hours and so on. So. So I've been wondering um, if, if you're mirroring them to a logging system to keep them for, for instance, yeah. For instance, yeah. for such situations, like you see monitoring that two days ago, five VMs were slow starting. And then if you, if you are, because if you're more mirroring all the events, you can look back then and co correlate it with other events which are going on in the cluster at that moment and so Yeah. I. We do have Kibana. I mean, I don't know if um, I don't know if we have all if we capture all the events or if it's. Um, I believe it's just we're just grabbing logs from all the components. I'm not sure if it gets to the point of it having the events, but that's a good point too. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, that makes sense. I, I think I have a path forward. I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the audit tool. I think that'll get a good start to this. Okay, um, let's go to the second um, point. Um, so I, I added this earlier. This was also from last time. Um, so Marcel, you created a, a PR for this already, which is um, which is good. So basically, just to reiterate from last time, um, we've we've had uh, like Marcel has done some really good presentations talking about the different data he's gathered. He's shown a lot of good dashboards. So I thought it made sense if we could all share some dashboard um, that we do uh, that we can show whenever we're doing testing, so we can just kind of compare. Um, you know, so we all have access to it. So we don't have to build a new one each time or we don't have, you know, different data or anything like that. We just have an apples to apples comparison when we, whenever we do uh, show any pictures. Um, so any sort of like, any sort of changes like we want to do with the performance, let's contribute to, uh, to the community dashboard and Kubert monitoring. So Marcel, you added this, which is, it sounds like it's, you've got a, I think I read it. You had a bunch of the, the recent changes that we brought in, which is a good start. Yeah, it was actually I was pending to to commit this uh, this new you know PR, 
So w- once I saw your, your message, I just I just did the just after. Yeah, cool. but thanks. So uh yeah, this is an update version of the, the dashboard that you guys saw before. I was improving that a lot and including many things that I think it's uh, important for the counter plane. So then we have like some I some few you know few categories now like request rates and latency. Then the uh, the work queues uh, metrics, then um, etcd metrics and general process you know memory, fi- uh, CPU file description and network, and go length status garbage collector, uh, memory uh, and. Well, it's actually, it has uh, go routines and threads. It's missing here. And storage operations, which is interesting. Um, in the, the tests, you know, especially when I deleting uh, VM. So sometimes it takes a lot of time, you know, to delete VMIs. And I also see when it's taking a lot of time to delete VMIs, I see a lot of errors uh, for uh, unmount uh, the empty deer directory. So this, uh, you know, this slowdown might be related to that. So um, so of the metrics, I think it's interesting. So this is the, the new dashboard. Um, I, I don't know if I have a picture of that right now, but... Uh, do you have it on your, uh, are you able to share your screen? Yeah, let me share my screen, so one second. Is it sharing? Not yet, at least not for me. No, I don't see anything. Oh, it says, oh, one second. It seems I need to enable some. Mm. It's, I think I need to um, reopen. Oh. Can you, can you see something? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I thought I would need to fix that. Okay, so uh, we have, so this, this one you guys already saw, you know, this uh, read code request. It's basically uh, get, you know, uh, uh, watch and this operation. Uh, and we have the durations. The duration, something that warns me is virtual machine list. It's taking one minute. It's not the watch, watch also is was expecting to be slow, but at least it's taking one minute. So, and I, I always see that. And something's very slow, you know, in the, you know, what's the request that it's it's taking one minute, but some uh, list requests taking one minute. Anyway, the goal here is to just describe the dashboard. So we have the write code, same thing, uh, but for put, delete. Uh, this is the, the metric that it's interesting. Uh, I also keep this, the rate limit, duration, um, the VMI creation. Uh, for some reason, pending phase doesn't show up for me, but I need to investigate more of that. So because you guys see that, isn't it? Um, I don't know why. Zero seconds. Might oh, just be zero. it might be zero. That's the right. Yeah. And uh, I... Yeah, I don't show the values that has zero. That okay, thank you. That's that's the reason. Okay, so I also have this VMI count and the the rate. The rate is interesting just to see how you know more or less how many VMIs per second it's being created when we do the dense test. And then there were all the work queues metrics that we already saw before. And and then process open files. We can see that Virt Handler has many open files, and from you know it's the main the main one actually here. But it's only eight, so it shouldn't be that problematic here. But it's just something to, to keep an eye on that. And and then 
before we didn't have the threads, but now it's so it's good just to have not only the go routines, but also the number of threads isn't it, that it's been created. And the garbage collector also that's been problematic. Right now, the QB RBCA that's the, the, the one that spends more time on the garbage collecting for the tests. And lo, all, everything looks fine also for me here. And the ATCD, uh, I think we were discussing that before. So the ATCD performance, especially the request duration, it's something that we, we need to keep an eye on that. And if some everything that is higher than 10 milliseconds, uh, the official ETCD documentation says that it's you need to to see that it's a problematic and the storage. So this is the storage operations, and it's mostly related to the pods. And we see you, you can see here, for example, the errors. And these are specific experiments here that you see there was like a very, we can see here first, uh, where is it? Yeah, the request here. Anyway, anyway, you can see like it was a big gap between the experiments from nine to 11. I have one hour, I think waiting here or 30 minutes, I don't remember now, but it's still like it was a long time waiting for the VMs to be deleted to be able to run the other tests. And we see for exactly for that, it's a lot of, uh, you know, amount uh, error here, uh, operations for when it's deleting the VM, okay? Maybe it's as expected to happens that, I don't know. So, but uh, just some correlation here. Anyway, this is the dashboard. So uh, that it's there, and uh, the idea is to have it open and anyone can can play with that. That's um, great. So, um, oh, go on, Kevin. No, I, I just wanted to ask if um, maybe we could move the VMI metrics to the top, like how many there are, um, because it's like the main indicator you're looking at mostly, like everything depends on how many VMIs there are. If, if there is no VMIs and you get a lot of errors, it's bad if you don't have, if they have a lot of VMIs, like, I think. Yeah, it, we can reshuffle, yeah, the order here, yeah. Okay, I can do that. So this dashboard can be, is basically replace, it's always up to date and it would basically replace what we merged some time ago into Kubernetes slash Kubernetes CI, right? Yeah, yeah. The idea is I, I push that to the monitoring and I think you already mentioned that before that we actually maybe should, you know, um, you know, pull the dashboard from this uh, repository, yeah. you know. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. yeah. And we can also pull it into our CI Grafana board. Yes. So, yeah, great. The, the, for the city, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, and because I wasn't there last time, I wanted to ask, did you see any changes with the rate limit uh, PR? Did you do that? Uh, I don't remember. I think this is the up to date. Um, it was today. I run today with the last master. So, but I, I yeah, I, I need I need to double check that. I cannot. I I don't know. But I, okay, yeah. If you didn't play explicitly with the values, it may just still be too low to not hit any rate limits. So yeah, I didn't play with the values yet. Okay, great. Just just to be up to date. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice work. Nice work, Stella. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Um, okay. Well, let's go to the next item. So we have metrics focused on VMIs and not VM. Uh, yeah, I, I added that because it came up. Um, um, I might team, uh, I think a few days ago, um, I was ask if we have like count and some other basic metrics on on vms and i um noticed or I, yeah I, I was like uh, i don't think so and um we're focusing a lot on the vmi because it's the main workload but we also still have a first citizen object called vm, VM and i 
it also progresses through stages and I and does things and I wanna mention We're that and faces, see what, yeah. what everybody thinks if we should treat it like that and also get core metrics for it. What would you be looking yeah. for for metrics on the VM? I, I well, what we look for in that specific case was like the amount of VMs that are running, but we are looking right now with look, talking about phase transitions and um, adding metrics to our dashboards. And we all do all that for VMIs. And I don't know if we should do that for VMs as well, or only VMs instead. That, I, that doesn't sound right, by the way. Um, and uh, yeah. Well, one. I think that we have, um, so we have metrics that represent a running VM today, and that's just the VMI metrics that we have. I think if there's something specific to the VM controller, that's where it makes sense to make VM specific metrics. So like, for example, how many restarts a VM experiences or um, uh, VMs that are in, I, I don't know, what else would we really want? It's just specific to VMs. So we, we VMs have, stuck I think we have some like flows like where we're waiting for PV, for data volumes to be ready before we start to VM. Or no, they don't move to VMI, I think, right? But yeah. Uh, no, yeah. actually, I think that is a VM um, specific flow. So you have a data volume template. It's going to create that data volume. I think it's going to wait for that data volume to complete before moving on to creating the VMI. So that that would be a specific one. Uh, storage yeah, provision. Stuff like this, yeah. I, I, yeah, think I think for, we're for adding just seeing how many VMs are there, I would not say that this is something we would want that. I think there are solutions where you can kind of create kind of all kinds of metrics out of Kubernetes objects without having to edit to yeah. object. But for, for specific things, like David mentioned, I think it makes sense if people need it. Yeah, like, I don't know, running and not running VMs. Yeah, I mean, you can also get that easily through a query, but I was asked if we have that. And I I didn't think about VMs at all the last few calls here. And we always talk about VMIs and I, I don't know if yeah, that's- for, 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 for something like not running VMs, I'm not sure. For instance, I, if, if the, I would say like not running VMs, which should run, yes. Not running <laughs> VMs, I'm not sure what is that. Um, do we can't, do we also, how many yeah i don't know i think there are there are ways to see how many config maps are there and so on right i i don't but know if i think there are ways in, something I, like that yeah, i think there, yeah i think there are already pluggables which give you general things like yeah. how many objects are there how many deletes are happening on it and so on i don't i'm not sure if we should take the, these basic operations directly here yeah but but anything where something unusual is happening or where we need where we need something to I don't, sorry dude, my drawer is <laughs> ringing and not stopping <laughs> come on yeah where, where anything where, where we would need something to see that something unusual is happening <laughs> don't worry, so we have to go to the door yeah no worries <laughs> very persistent mailman Does that, um, does that satisfy your ask, uh, Kevin? Yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't, yeah, it was partially meant as a, I don't know, what do you think, and a reminder that. So, Kevin, is yeah. is that motivated by the fact that someone maybe create a VM directly instead of creating a VMI? Because I mean, if you if you always have the VMI, why do you want similar metrics for VM, for example? I mean, I think we are creating a metric, as somebody in my team is creating a metric that shows a VMIs created from template, a VMs created from templates. But what we usually advertise, and uh, what we, I think what even our docs in like OpenShift say, create VMs and not VMI. Or like we don't document creating VMIs, we tell people to create VMs and May, may also from templates because VM creates a VMI for you. So yeah, I was curious if, if that should be different or yeah. 
Yeah, I added a few metrics that I think to me like these are the ones that I could see. You know, having a few counts around these I think it makes a lot of sense to me. And I mean, like the result would also be um, most people actually don't use VMs. Most people use VMIs. That would be interesting to know because right now we tell, as far as I know, OpenShift customers to use VMs and not VMIs because the VM does the VMI stuff for you. We were, I, think, but... I think that, I mean, there, I think it, um, it makes sense. Like people are normally not using pods directly just right. for, so, so manually. I think it makes sense here too. I, I can definitely see some scale use cases where you can't just do your own VMI stuff, but for the usual VM case where you want to stop it, restart it, modify it and start it again and so on, you probably want a VM. But there are other things. So thank you. VM is one control on top of VMI, I would say. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to say, ask or say is what's a little bit tricky here is that the metrics we kind of have all kind. I would expect that. Or, um, what what you very often have in Kubernetes is that you have to monitor your whole mod namespace to see if something goes wrong. Like you would probably not necessarily see that a pod has issues in the storage provisioning phase where, where it's waiting for PVCs. You would just see that it takes long to start, but you would probably see on the events and on some metrics that the storage provisioning itself takes a long time and you would basically monitor both and see, oh, pods are taking a long time now to start, and you will lose it, but also PVC provisioning is taking a long time. So this may be related, right? This is how you normally tackling problems there. No. Or maybe I just see it differently, but that is mostly how, how I see things happening in the monitoring side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I got what I what I asked <laughs> thanks but yeah definitely if, if there is something which which people need to see to see if everything is right or not that definitely makes sense to have for vms for vms then yeah okay um okay uh, so do we have any more items i have a few things i could talk about if we don't but uh are there any other topics that we could want to write in here we can take a few minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Well, so one of the one of the things that I was gonna bring up um, or just maybe discuss. So, like, we we have um, kind of the the lay of the land of things right now. We have um, so Marcelo's got the the density test um, right now. We have that in CI, right? We have um, David wrote the audit tool. Um, Marcel, you did the the uh, the load generation tool. Um, so I think so. Some of the like, kind of looking at the, what we have, the next steps uh, we have in front of us are to hook a bunch of this stuff up together, and then start getting some some baselines, some thresholds. Um, I think that was one of the things that we had from last time. Um, so we're getting close to a few of these things uh, being able to. Or tying a few things, two things together, and start getting a bunch of valuable information on a on a per PR basis. So I think the next step, and 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 then I think this one's for you, David. So David, you're doing the you're going to do the thresholds, and um, as part of that, um, we're going to have the and this is going to be in CI, right? This is how this is how you plan on doing it, or what's your approach with this? Yeah, so uh, just initially um, going to export the perfi results. And then okay. after we see a few runs of that, we can establish the pattern of what we want to set for our thresholds in that environment. And we can commit that. Um, it's going to take me a little bit to get to that. I probably won't, won't start on that until next week. But um, that's my idea. Somebody else can take that as well. If uh, somebody else has more bandwidth to, to work on this more uh, timely than I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was planning to actually create a test, you know, integrating all of these tools. So 
yeah we, so we, we have... can talk we can synchronize with them okay so i guess we'll good. yeah so we have um so as part of this right david it's that we have to we have to integrate a bunch of the tools right you like um or is it that you want to run the audit tool and just generate the result in ci and then maybe the kind of tying it together in ci could be separately would that work what um what do you mean by tying it together in CI? so like um we have we have the generation we have the load generation tool we have the audit tool and we have marcella's um density test so tying together three of those but that could be a separate task uh than just generating the thresholds or yeah the, so I, I i think marcella correct me if i'm wrong that you were going to be replacing the current density tests or at least in the this generate the load for the density test with your your new load generation tool and then we can integrate independently of that eventually this perf audit tool as well um and the perf audit tool it doesn't have to have thresholds immediately you can just gather results and export them uh, and then we can decide on thresholds after we get a few iterations of data mm -hmm. yeah that's that's the idea is to replace the the, the other tasks that we have there and with the, the the new tools that we are creating okay well not not our creative we created already so <laughs> yeah and i also integrated the 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 dashboard in the ci to see the job that's running there i read talk with federico so it is there a Grafana dashboard right there? So, but I don't know. We, we cannot really see the metrics, you know, with the dash. We can maybe import. I don't know if we can add it, the Grafana dashboard there. But I, so, I, I I'll have a look well, at that. Yeah. What do you mean you you can't see them? So yeah, we have a Grafana dashboard instance, but you you cannot see the metrics from the Prometheus instance then, or? No, I didn't. I didn't. So. The, the CI, you know, infrastructure has a Grafana dashboard that I'm seeing, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't play with that. And I don't know if we can see the job that is already running there. And, well, we can see, but I don't know which metrics is exported. And if we can, uh, you know, dynamically include a new dashboard there, or if we need yeah. to. Um, yeah, but, but the dashboards are so if you have, if we get your PR merged in Hubert slash monitoring, uh, mm -hmm. we can just uh, roll. We, we can just run our deploy job every day, and it would pick up the latest change there, and it would deploy it on the community of the Grafana dashboard. I guess that would be something which you want to do from the at the at least. Yeah. Can you share a link to that Grafana as soon as it's ready? Yeah, like, uh, I, I, I think I shared it in the discussion somewhere, but I can again. No issue. I've uh, been waiting to look at our test for metrics for a while now. Very cool. So Very curious. I can just say, I can't give you a link where you can see the dashboard. I can just give you a link where the dashboard should be added to be deployed automatically. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so who can. Uh, yeah, I haven't found the Grafana yet. Who, uh, who has access to the Grafana board? Is it like... Um... That's public. This is public, okay. It's, yeah. Cool. So general, the dashboard is... Wait, let me share it in Zoom. Okay. And so then, Marcella, once... Um, the dashboard is have... here, grafana.ci.cubit.io. And we have a deploy job where we deploy right now a few JSON dashboards, always when we run the job. And we would have to modify the Ansible rule to also check out the Qbert monitoring repo and deploy them too. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that I need to check is the labels because, you know, maybe we, we want to, you know, have some specific labels for the job, something like that. Yeah, well, but, but yeah, that, it would be great if we can, for instance, see the job ID so that we can directly go to the or something. But I think it's great if we first just see some results and then we can. Do yeah, it was generic and then we can play with that. Yeah. Yeah. What would be great for the Grafana? I, 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 I just clicked it. Um, I don't know what other metrics we have in there, but we, we are exporting metrics with uh, Prometheus jobs uh, with our test runs. So for Prometheus, it would be great if we could use um, 
Grafana or if we have a Prometheus UI to explore those metrics without creating a dashboard checking in because we can't access them other ways. So the Prometheus metrics are also right now publicly available. Oh, okay. Is so it Prometheus.ci? I guess. Very Prometheus. Yeah. But ah, okay. I, well, then, then never mind. <laughs> you can I see yeah. where the Grafana is connected in it. So just, just take that. Can I? Uh, uh, best to ask Federico where it is. There were issues yeah. with getting the DNS right, and you have to set the header and the right IP address or something to yeah. oh. access it right now. So, but but yeah, it's available. Mm -hmm. So um, just to understand, so like we can. Um, so this says all the information about the CI. We could we yeah. like is this the so work that you're doing, Marcel? Is that you'd integrate like some more information based on a job? Like we could get like the perf data from it. Yeah, okay. that's the idea. Yeah. I see. And we're, we're collecting all already from this one test job, the metrics, right? Mm -hmm. Did we merge it, Marcello? It's, it's merged, yeah. You, yeah, you, so, we so can we're try collecting to find. the metrics already. We're just not uh, exposing, exposing, showing them. them with the dashboard, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Let me add the link to uh, that. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Definitely looking forward to that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I think we have. I, I think those are the kind of the three, the three, the three things here. And Marcel, you're looking at this one. Dave, you look at this one. Um, I can help with the middle one. Do the hook up the load generation to um, to replace the density to the way you're doing it, the way you're generating a load right now in density. Um, yeah. And give that one a shot. Uh, yeah, I, I was planning Unless to. Unless you want to do it, Marcel, it's up to you. Yeah, I was because it it will be very you know very short and easy to to change that. So for okay. because I, I work on that. So. But it, unless if you really want to do that, it's fine. Also. No, no, that's fine. I mean, you, I think you you understand the generation tool pretty well, so I'd probably mm -hmm. take trade a lot faster for you. Okay, cool. All right, are there any um? Any other topics that we want to bring up, discuss? Yeah, just just one last comment. So, if you guys remember, I was you know playing with the creating five hundred VMs per in a, in a node, mm -hmm. and for you know our scaling test, we want to pack as much VM as possible in the future. And I was reaching a lot of, you know, libvirt uh, timeouts. And so I, and I created a cluster with the kube spray. And the first, the first cluster that I created with was with Docker runtime. Then I tried with cryo and actually it got worse. It could create only five, 400 VMs. And I was creating 480 VMs. And then when I try to use uh, container D as the runtime, I could create 500 VMs, uh, you know, without uh, any complaint from creating the containers. So without any libvirt uh, timeout. And I also, the, the, using the cryo, actually I receive a lot of, you know, uh, events saying that the cry the runtime was overloaded and was delaying the creation of containers something like that so it might be the with docker was also you know seeing the same issue the, the runtime was being overloaded and that's why i couldn't create 500 vms but using the runtime as container i, can, I could do that so and then i i, I moved to an x issue that was shortage of uh, memory that I already discussed with Raman that we can actually uh, allocate the minimal, you know, uh, me memory for VMs, uh, VMIs now, and and then I can you know schedule more VMs per per node. So and and finally I managed to create you know to create, just to say finally finally I managed to create one five hundred VMIs per node. So yeah, I will share you know um, the new experiments soon so with you guys. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, that one, uh, that'd be cool. And then um, if you do the, the rate limiter change that Roman mentioned um, to see the difference in 
crate time or just uh, the no, how much is being rate limited, that'd be cool. Um, okay. All right, we have four minutes left. I actually remembered. So we have, um, there was a few, I just want to draw attention to a few of the, um, the open um, MRs in case we can, if these are ready. Uh, the PPROF profiler, is this one good? Uh, like, has there been any more review that's needed on this? Looks like you have an, one looks good. Oh, it, yeah. uh, I think it was good to go. I had to just, did I just rebase it? Yeah, I think I just rebased that today. There was just a merge conflict. Uh, so I need another, what do I need? Can you go up to the labels, see what I need there? Yeah, last time was need a rebase, so I don't know. Okay, so I need to approve, and it looks good to me. I, I had it looks good to me at one point, but I had to rebase. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Um, who, Marcelo, are you are you comfortable with this? And I can do the the approve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, do you see. have approved? Can you approve, Brian? Did you get that? No, okay, actually I don't. Roman, I, I can't have to do it. I think I can also. So yeah, actually I don't. Yeah, Roman, if uh, I think you'll have to you have to do the approve here. Uh, well, uh, if David has to looks good to me, so you can self approve. You can just not put a, a looks good. Yeah, to it me should there. be it should, uh, okay. HTM should be enough. Okay. Really, I can self approve. I've never tried. No, that. You you cannot write looks good to me, but you can approve. Yeah. I can approve my own PR. I, yeah, but you could not look, not, not looks, <laughs> add yeah. look good to me to your code. Okay. That's, <laughs> I uh, think it's automatically well. approved by yourself. So that's why an LTTM will be enough for a maintainer, but I'm not sure I've seen that happen before in Kubernetes and was surprised. So, oh, so in Kubernetes, yeah. yeah, in Kubernetes, if you are, in a, are in a proof of an area and the code just touches parts where you can approve, you automatically get the approved label, even if you don't approve your own work. <laughs> That's interesting. I will try it. Yeah. Yeah, right, I think yeah. last I think that when I, I when I approve, I receive a message that you need to approve also. So I, I don't know if it needs two two approvals or something like that. So yeah, and there is also the, the difficulty of course because when you when you do a review and select approve there, you just add it looks good to me, whereas slash approve is something different, right? Yeah, that's how I accidentally merged the PR ones. <laughs> okay. All right, here's the next one. Uh, this is the monitor request counts. This one's good. It's got approved and looks good to me. Looks like it'll just, um, it should just go in after CI passes. Okay. Yeah, I triggered uh, that. I think storage is a bit flaky today. And then your yeah. load generator, Marcel already merged. Yeah, okay, this one's done. Okay. Um, the rate limiter, I think this merged already. Roman, this is yours, I believe. Yeah. Um, I'm still working on the, the failed um, phase transition metrics. I'm going to transition um, what I'm doing. Slightly, I think, like based on your last comment, David, I, I'm almost thinking that this needs to be actually in create. The only thing we need to do is actually just catch. We just need to change the time we measure. The old time just needs to be from the deletion timestamp, and and the few cases that it exists, or in the in the case it does exist. Otherwise, we just continue. We just do what's there. But I'm still working on that one. Um, this one merged. Yeah, it did. Um, this is just an issue, and then it's merged. Oh yeah. Um, okay, that's CP one. Um, uh, the the go routine fix merged, and so did a few of the backports. <laughs> um, uh, but not all of them, because it seems like we did. Somebody didn't backport everything to 
consistently. So um, a few of the backports fail for missing images and lanes and very weird stuff I don't understand and I couldn't get help really, but I think I can't like, I, 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 do, I can't bring up the energy to fix uh, releases that nobody else touched for a long time, even though releases before them got touched for a long time. So like I managed to merge 0 0.36, but not 0 0.37, but I managed 0 0.38 because 0 0.37 got forgotten at some point, probably. I don't know. Yeah, we, um, there are some unofficial long-term releases, <laughs> let me say it this way. <laughs> yeah, I, I managed to backport to the releases important to OpenShift, so, but not on everything else. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I the we we use thirty five, but we we ended up doing. <laughs> so it looks like we didn't get the to the uh, the the end of it. That's all right. We we we, we could. I did the backward internally, so it's fine. <laughs> so the situation's not going to always be like this. Um, yeah, I know. Kind of in an awkward situation about. right now, but in the future, once we approach. Uh, getting into CNCF incubation and eventually GA, uh, the predictability of our backports and our release schedule uh, for how long the community actually supports releases uh, will kind of be defined. Uh, right now, it's just kind of in the backlog. backlog. Okay, well, we're at, we're at time, everybody. Uh, thanks very much. I'll see you all online. Have a good day. Bye. See you. Okay.